And we are getting started with the rematch against uh, Maltanus or Maltanius. I'm still struggling because I've never really heard any word like that and it's not sticking to my mind easily. He has the option of going Typhoon spec with Steel Balls and Crawlers here. Oof. Could really make this interesting and he does. Well, question mark. The question is, will he go aggro? Is he a hybrid player who is able to do both? This time I do have chaff clear and I can get a little bit of chaff. But I really wish these sledgehammers were steel balls instead. Yeah, he is deploying stock standard and he's deploying on the other side. This is something that I almost never see aggro players do. And I think I should shit on them for not doing it uh, way more often than they actually do from what I have seen, I should probably say. Um, why don't you alternate between sides? I saw last time he had extra deploys on this side, on uh, what amounts to his right side, from his perspective. He had extra deployments here because it seems that Acro is, at least in his mind, more common on that side. So what's the purpose in always going where the enemy's strong side is? Why shouldn't you start hitting the opponent's weak sides? Assassin Steel Balls going after the towers, going to get really annoying here. But at the same time, they are having a hard time getting through all of these semi-chunky targets. Yeah, I think the Steel Balls can handle that. Eh, uh, the, the Sledges can handle that. I wish they were Steel Balls. So now my opponent is stuck with a lot of firepower in Nirvana. We have Smart Arc Light here, and I think both of us pick it, because this is going to be some Carry Arc aggro. I have the advantage as far as Arc Lights go. I already have 3 deployed to uh, my opponent's 0. And I decide to drop another Arc Light and another Fang. This is a... Uh... Yeah, this is a Flank Squad. And then we have Round 2 Charge Shot. One line of sledges completely obliterated, but we'll see what exactly happens here. This time there is Chafka in the corner, so my opponent can't just go and say, hey, I'm going to throw some replicate here and it's going to get infinite value. This time the Arclights can kill it. Now with charge shot, you can see this Arclight just struggled hard. I got tower sniped by a bunch of crawlers. My opponent didn't really play for any towers, uh, so it came a bit as a surprise to me. Tower timing for both of us, I think, mostly wasted. Now this arc light is probably not, uh, probably doesn't have enough DPS to kill all of this, or does it? Oh my goodness, it has enough DPS. Look at that charge shot arc light here, destroying everything. All of my arc lights leveled. His arc lights didn't. Charge shot here really paid off. He has his typhoons, but honestly, I don't think typhoons into carry arcs is that favorable of a matchup. Maybe it's not even that unfavorable, but I think I'd rather be on the carry arc side if only that's what I know more than, uh, well, being on the typhoon side of an acro, uh, acro carry arc charge shot defense. I don't know how to say this. We have some Mustangs because uh, I think I should be protecting myself and getting something against potential uh, issues with other units coming in here just instead of... Why am I fumbling again? What is happening to my mind this time? Anyway, I'm defending against the flank, putting the wasps on one side and putting the mustangs on the other side. But my opponent didn't go for any wasps. He has gotten himself a wraith to clean up. Oil hurting a bit. I don't think it's too bad here. The spike of units is cleaning house. Like these steel balls have nothing that they are actually good against. So they will only get destroyed. At the same time, I have nothing good against air, so 
Are these few Mustangs going to be capable of wiping all of that out? The answer is probably no. Unless all of this is so tanky that the uh, Rave is just going to get uh, destroyed in the meantime. Nah. Rave has too much HP and instantly goes to level 2. I have a Rhino and there's oil in the way, so I don't think I can push the main route here. We also get fire badges to ignite it, or my opponent probably does. We'll see what he drops. I decide to go for the fast here because that is just the amount of AA that I need to kill a level 2 brave. Presumably level 2. He really ought to sell these. They serve no purpose whatsoever. Yeah, the Rhino here is just a tank. And I decide to drop some additional arc lights. They are getting good value, so why should I not? This is all the AA that I need, so I can start thinking about just getting more arcs. My opponent has gotten himself a level 2 melter. I don't entirely know what that is for, but maybe to defend against the Rhino, maybe he expects me to, like, throw it here and for a round beacon into this tower or something like that, but I see no point throwing a rhino where there's steel balls, to be honest. He decides to get another wraith. Alright, that I can respect, yeah. The flanks are being handled. The rhino is tanking an absurd amount of damage. And hopefully the carry arc is going to get an absurd amount of value behind this. The melter with superior range is really good here. But at the same time the arcs and the sledges have kinda taken out everything. And uh, this fast here will stay behind and does certainly have the firepower to kill this unit given enough time. That is the critical constraint here. It does seem like it's getting the amount of time. You can definitely also see the arc light chunking into it as well. Now at this point I know I've won the round and I'm just hoping Bear like, please don't give him another oil. 